Hey, I'm Tyler Von Sager, I'm part of the Queen City Overland family. This is my 2017 Tacoma. So when I built this truck originally, you know, I had in mind people pulling out in front and uh, just having protection on the front, whether it be a car or whether it be going out on the trail. I went with the CBI uh, front bumper. Originally I had the smaller hoop one, but then I saw the big one just to protect the glass and stuff like that. Like that the best. Uh, we go to the outer banks quite a bit, so I did a custom little fish uh, fishing rod holder right here. Um, inside the bumper, what I liked about it is you can actually put a winch inside. Um, and then I went with the Factor 5 um, link right here. And then up underneath, there's full skids all the way underneath, RCI and all that jazz. Um, and then you got to have some amber, some light at night for dust, rain, snow, any of that kind of stuff. So put the amber fogs in. That's pretty much it on the front. I did want, so kind of in the wrap, what I wanted to incorporate, my eyes are kind of sensitive to the sun. So being a white truck, went with a black hood, it uh, cuts down the light as well as when you have the, um, the roof light bar on too, it just cuts down the haze. So it makes it a lot easier. So two big important things on vehicles that a lot of people kind of overlook. Um, one is the suspension. It's a super expensive thing to get into, unfortunately, but it's kind of one of those buy once, cry once kind of deals. So I went with the Old Man Emu, the, the BP-51s. Um, phenomenal suspension. It took my off-road travel from about 20 miles an hour to about 50 mile an hour before you got your, your rocks shook and loose. Um, also, I went with the TRD Pro stock wheels, just the offset so that, that way you're not having to deal with cutting or any of that kind of stuff. The SPC upper control arms is definitely a, a good bet to go with, so that way you can get your caster and camber right, because a lot of times with these Toyotas, if you lift it above two and a half inches, your, ca your uh, camber is going to be off and you're going to wear the outside of your tire, so that's a crucial component of these. Another crucial element is the uh, the tire that you have. So I went with a BFG KM3 tire. Um, I've got about 60,000 miles on these tires. They've been phenomenal. We've beat the hell out of them. Um, they're a 10 ply tire and why I went with a 10 ply so that way you can air them down to a lower PSI to get traction, whether it be in sand, mud, snow, whatever it is that you're trying to do. I prefer the mud terrain over the all terrain though. Um, one, it has lasted longer and two, grip, all that stuff off road is just way better. So up top here, uh, we've got some traction boards. I went with the Max Trax. Um, they're great. Uh, they're just like any other ones though. They will end up breaking if you do spin on them, but it's definitely a good element to have. Um, right below that, sitting underneath it is my Zargis box. You can really go with anything. I went with Zargis just because it's held up a lot better over time and I didn't really like the plastic aspect of it, but it does its job. Um, underneath that, this is a Prince roof rack. I liked it just because of it was it's modular and you can put a lot of stuff up on top of it. Um, a lot of different mounting points, whether you want to put lights on the outside, handles or boxes, solar panels, you name it. It's, it's, it's phenomenal. On the far side of the car, I went with a Safari snorkel. There's a bunch of different companies out there. They all kind of do the same thing. Uh, I just liked the look of that one. But if you're going to be driving a lot of dusty roads or any of that type of element, you're definitely gonna want one of those. It helps the car breathe a little bit better. Um, and plus, if you do end up getting into water, you're not pulling, you're not pulling uh, air from right here, you're pulling it from up top. Down below here, I ended up going with a RCI um, rock slider. This is another crucial element if you are gonna do any kind of rock crawling or any of that kind of stuff. If you end up smacking the quarter panel or your uh, body line of the car right here, it will be a lot of damage and it'll get into your doors and stuff like that. So having these are crucial and you want, I preferred the bolt on ones versus the welded ones just so that way I could take them off. Cause you can see they're kind of chewed up already. So if you do chew them up, you pull them off, get them blasted and then repowder coat them. And I chose to go with the ones that are kicked out in the back, kind of like a tree saver. So if you are going up next to a tree, it'll hit here and kind of slide your car over a little bit. So for the rear bumper, what I ended up going with, um, I toyed back and forth between the, the dual swing out. I like that, but then unfortunately with your awning, if you have one arm swung out that way, it kind of blocks it. So I went with a single swing out. Um, I've got two jerry cans right here in case you get into some deep bush and you want to be able to carry some extra fuel. Little baby fuel or uh, propane tank that powers my my shower, uh, my grill, and then sometimes I'll use my for my heater in there as well. And I found these cool lights. Um, they're magnetic, and I've got them kind of littered throughout the truck. But for cooking and stuff like that, you can kind of move them around. They're little LED lights. And then my spare tire, um, 
kind of doubles as a couple different things. So when we go mountain biking, I'll put this on, and then I also have a trash roo that goes over it for you know trash when you're out there. It's pretty nice. And then on the back side of it, um, this was an option that CBI had back in the day. Um, you can actually carry your high lift jack back here, and then you have a nice little table that flips down. And yeah, you know you got to have a bottle opener back here too for when you want to drink some beer. So back here, I chose to go with Baja S2 Pros. Um, I had a big light bar on the back originally, but unfortunately this bumper couldn't really house it and then the tent that I went with couldn't do it. So these S2 Pros are phenomenal. They give you a wide beam uh, and, and really far out. And then also if people are getting behind you and kind of annoying you, you can you know flash them. One of my favorite aspects of this truck is my awning. Um, this truck's had a bunch of different builds, a bunch of different awnings from the straight out ones, from the 270. Uh, and I finally landed with OVS and man, they've crushed it. Uh, the quality that they have as far as like the material that they use and the structure for the arms themselves um, and just to how it stores up. It's a great awning, great price and the amount of shade that you get out of it is awesome. They offer walls with them as well. So if you get into like really windy conditions or you want to get out of the rain, it's it's phenomenal. Definitely in my in my opinion, the best awning on the market. So I chose to go with uh, AT Overland's Habitat. I've had the Summit, that was a great tent. I had a couple CVT tents, they're great. Um, we chose to go with this because of the space. As you can see, it's massive. So you have two platforms that you can sleep on. The main platform is the far side and then you can actually sleep over here, which is great too. Um, I liked it because I have dogs as well. So this whole side actually comes up and it's a completely screened in area over here, which is great. You can either get into it from the back of the truck or you can get into it from the side. The tent just breathes. You can open up all the vents and stuff like that and it, it is super cold up there and get a nice breeze going through it. It's great for the dogs. Um, another feature that I really loved about this is one, this under here couples as some shade, which is great. Um, but they have an option where you can actually get some aircraft track underneath here as mounting points. And so what we like to do is we'll actually hang an Eno chair from here or a hammock or something like that. The one downside that I had about this tent was solar panels on the top. So if you go with a setup like this, obviously you're going to lose a lot of your roof space. So there aren't a lot of companies out there that have the ability to mount something. So we actually came up with an idea. Uh, we have our solar panel right here and we put it on hinges with a nice little latch and you essentially just pop it down like this. And then I've just got mine to where I rested on my, my tire right here. Um, we're trying to come up with a little bit of a different idea to where to hold it up. So that way, regardless of where you go, you kind of angle your vehicle into the sun and you're getting charged the entire time you're out there. So one thing you need to pay attention to as an overlander, or just somebody who wants to get out camping is how you want to keep your food and your drinks and stuff cold. Um, you know, we went the Yeti route for a long time. It was great, Tupperware containers and everything, but we were getting a lot of moisture and stuff in our food. So we switched over to fridges. Um, this setup is actually a National Luna fridge. Uh, it's a great fridge, one of the better fridges on the market. Um, I definitely think it's up there and competes with Dometic. Um, Dometic's my favorite, um, but I just had to build it out to make this work. So I originally had it where it would slide in the center, but I didn't like that because it was kind of an issue for getting into the food and the beer and all of that stuff whenever you're trying to eat. So I found this company, it's actually E-Trailer is this slide company. So the fridge slides out, which is nice. And then underneath it, you have your place for your, for your stove top right here, which is pretty neat. So the cooktop that I went with is just your basic Coleman. Um, there's a bunch of different ones out there on the market. Coleman works great for me. It's got a two burner on it, which is really nice. And it's got these wind blocks. Um, so if you're ever cooking in the wind and stuff like that, it's real nice. If I were to do it again, I would try to maybe go with like a Blackstone or something like that, just because if you want to cook hibachi or stuff like eggs or anything, and I mostly do burritos, so it keeps all the stuff in and it's not quite as messy. There's a lot of companies out there that offer different types of fridge slides. Um, they're, they're all pretty good in a sense, but unfortunately you'll run into a price issue. Um, what I wanted to do is I wanted to be able to house my fridge and then my grill underneath, and then I still wanted to be able to have something up above it. So you can actually get into a fridge side for relatively inexpensive and then grab some of this, um, this extruded aluminum and build your own stuff for relatively cheap. You know, one of the biggest things about camping, if you uh, have a girlfriend or a wife or something like that, is staying clean, um, whether it be using a toilet or using a shower. So I went with the Camp Lux shower, the 5.0, put it on a slide here so it comes out and then I'm able to hook it to my propane and then 
take a shower off to the side. This thing, the Camp Lux, is phenomenal. Um, in my opinion, it it's one of the better ones that I've ever used. It heats up almost instantly and it, it gets hot. When you're deciding to build out the bed of your truck when you have a tent like this for livable space anyways, it's really, you just need to get out there and figure out exactly what you want. For me, I personally opted for space over usability. So I actually have a custom cubby built in here to where we put all of our luggage and stuff like that. Uh, down below here, it's more for gear. So I'm able to put my water, my speaker, my awning walls, and then I just put my chair right here. On this side, I wanted some sort of a bench for like when we're changing or if we wanted to hang out here on a rainy day or something like that. So I was able to make a nice cushion here. And then underneath here, I've got a little bit of storage, but this is what houses my water for my shower. So I've got a 20 gallon tank underneath here with a pump built into it. So kind of in the back of here, what we were trying to shoot for is things that we can grab without getting in the vehicle. Um, so whether you're cooking and want your pots and pans, sometimes we'll put some solo cups and stuff up in here, uh, our cutting board and stuff. And then back here, I wanted my power source to be towards the back one, because we sleep up top and two, if you want to charge your phone or your drone or solar or whatever it is that you're trying to charge off of here, it's towards the back. Um, and then down here, this is another great thing. If you are camping in a lot of dirty areas or something like that, especially the beach, um, it's a sand mat. And man, I'll tell you what, keeping, keeping it clean back here, having that outside is phenomenal. Definitely recommend it. When choosing power for the back of your vehicle, you need to decide kind of what you're gonna run off of it, whether it be a fridge, your lights, charging your phone, just kind of have an idea and that will give you a better idea of the size of battery bank that you need. I chose to go with something that already had an inverter and, all, and a solar charger built into it. Um, if you guys have any other recommendations, I haven't been super happy with this Jackery. Um, the 1000 Pro just doesn't seem to have enough power for me. I'll wake up in the morning after going to sleep at night and my fridge will take it from 100% all the way down to 40%. And it's really the only thing pulling off of it. I haven't had a chance to use some of the other products out there. I've used just a basic AGM battery, but if you guys have any other better options that you've had good experience with, whether it's Goal Zero or any of the other products out there, please, Give us some information, comments. Once again, I have a National Luna 55 liter fridge and it's just killing my battery bank. I like to be comfortable when I sleep. And uh, a lot of these tents, they come with a mattress, as you can see right here. It's decent. Um, it'll, it'll get you by, but it, you'll eventually sink down onto it and you'll feel the, the hardness of whatever it is that you're sleeping on. So we went with the X-Ped. You can get them at REI. They're a little bit pricey. But what's great about these is um, they're insulated on the inside, so it protects you from the cold. Most air mattresses, in my opinion, will get chilly underneath you in a tent or something like that. This thing is, one, it's self-inflating, and two, it'll go up to three inches, so you'll come all the way up here and you have a really comfortable place to sleep. And it's warm, which is nice. This is a really cool feature of the Habitat tent. We, uh, we put clothes up here, we put pillows up here, stuff that we don't want the dogs to step on or an extra blanket. Sometimes we'll even put the iPad up here when trying to watch a movie so you don't have to hold it and you can just lay down there. It's a super neat feature. Um, as you can kind of see up here, there's a lot of ventilation. You've got your window back there. These open up nice, which is cool. Get a lot of airflow going through here. On the side, you can see these doors open up, which are really nice. Great vantage point. On the inside of your vehicle, this is a very, very personal preference, whatever you like. Um, first thing I wanna start out talking about is the S-Pod. I don't like a bunch of switches everywhere. So I went with S-Pod, the, uh, the touch screen, which is nice because you have eight different functions on here. You can do a bunch of different lights on it. You can run your air compressor off of it, your fridge, whatever it is that you wanna do off of it. And what I really like about this too, personally, is you can control it from your phone. So kind of as a safety measure at night, if somebody ends up coming up, you actually have a button that you can push on your phone that'll start strobing all your different lights and kind of disorient people. Over here, moving over to the command center, um, I went with the Expedition Essential mount. And these are great. This is like the first generation, so they've gotten a lot better, a lot more solid. We have the GMRS Midland radio here. Great setup, uh, great if you're gonna be in a convoy. You can get out to a couple different miles depending on what type of antenna you have. Um, I went with a RAM mount to hold my phone right here. 
it's nice to be able to have the maps there. And then also I went with a RAM mount for my iPad. So that way you can have Gaia over here or Hema maps or Onyx off or whatever it is. So you can kind of get more deep into the trails as far as like looking at them and stuff like that. And then you can just have your generic map up here. We went with a type S uh, camera up here, just in case there's any accidents or anything that need to be filmed. And we we're actually able to pull full 4k footage off of this, which is nice. One of the biggest issues that we were having with the Tacomas is it's very dim in here with the OEM lighting. So Miso Custom makes these awesome lights. Um, whether you want really, really bright so you can see what's going on, or if you're just trying to get in and get some gear and don't want bugs to come in, you can actually push these buttons right here and it'll turn them red. So we've got that in the front and the back. Really, really great product. In the back of the truck, as a lot of you know, the Tacomas are really small and we're probably utilizing the seats maybe once or twice a year. So we have two dogs and we chose to go with a rear seat delete. A lot of the ones on the market were pretty pricey, so we ended up making our own. And so we've got the dog bed right here, which is nice. And then if you pull this out up underneath it, you actually have storage for anything you possibly think of. Um, you basically just push these buttons right here, pops up, and then you have storage up underneath there. And we ended up going with a kind of softer wood to make this. It was just cheap and then we ended up raptor lining it. It's held up really great with the dogs, hair, water, whatever you name of. And a lot of people can utilize this too if they want for a platform for the fridge or for drawers, you can build that on the back doing something like this, which is nice. And then back here, what we have, uh, this is a Rago Molly panel. We chose to go with the three panels. So this center panel can actually come off so you can still utilize the window in the middle but we just wanted to put a bunch of gear up there. It's nice, it'll hold pretty much anything. It's pretty stout. Definitely recommend something like that if you uh, are short on space. Here at Queen City Overland, we're really just trying to push the outdoor lifestyle. Um, we, we do a bunch of builds, whether it be electrical, wheels, tires, lifts, anything on this vehicle we can build for you. But our biggest push and passion is just to get more people involved in the overlanding community. It's, it's such a great community to be in. So if you have any questions, even if you don't use our services, just give us a call. If you guys like this video, there's gonna be a lot more like this. Give us a follow. We'll see you next time.